So hello everyone, this is Mariana and Nino, who keeps pestering me about being on the floor. And today I'm here to talk to you guys about the books I read in the months of November and December 2018. I'm changing the camera angle so you can see him. Um, so yeah, I know I'm kind of late at doing this video, but I've just been so busy studying and stuff that I kind of never sat down to record what I thought about the books I read in December and November. Um, and there weren't that many books, so let's just get started. The first book about which I want to talk to you guys is Persuasion by Jane Austen. Now, this is something that has been on my TV... Okay, he wants to take a photo. We're back. Now, Persuasion is something I've been meaning to read for ages, but I just never got around to it. And I finally decided to just pick up the, the book and give it a go. I know that a lot of people don't really like Persuasion, but I honestly thought it was really great. It's about this woman, Anne, who is in her mid, late 20s actually, so a bit old to get married, let's say, and she has once given up marriage with this guy whom she very much loves, Captain Wentworth, I think, um, because of the persuasion of others, because others told her not to do it. And now she finds herself older and wiser and rethinking her choices and wondering if she was right to turn it down. And while this is not very much focused on the romance and more focused on the relationships between Anne and other people and how she looks at everyone around her and forms her opinion on which uh, behaviors are right and wrong, I found this to be very, very entertaining. It very much manages to analyze a lot about the behavior of the people that appear in the novel, from the silly ones to the more mature ones, and to how everyone sort of affects one another, and how sometimes your decisions aren't exactly the best, but they're your decisions, and you should live with them and just learn to accept that. So I found this very, very interesting. It's more of a character study than a class study than Northanger Abbey, which was pretty cool. I, I very much enjoyed the aspect of going into the personalities of every single character in this book and learning through their behavior and through their decisions who they were and how they evolved. And yeah, I thought this was very, very interesting and is a very loving character and I very much enjoyed it. Another book I read in November, and I basically read it at one sitting because it was so short, was Elevation, the newest novel by Stephen King. This is more of a novella. It's on the shorter side. It's not even 200 pages. And it tells the story of a guy who finds out that every time he steps on a scale, he is losing weight. And he's he has been eating the same. He looks the same. Um, you'd say he's done nothing to lose weight, but he's slowly but surely um, losing more and more and more and becoming basically weightless. Um, and basically he tries and use this situation, this weird situation in his life, to turn around the lives of a couple uh, that has moved in next to him. And these are lesbians who have been sort of estranged by the community because they're lesbians and this guy tries to break these prejudices by using this sort of unique thing that has been happening to him it's a very short novella and it's still super interesting like king has this way of writing that is so peculiar and that is so very much like him it's brutally honest at times it's sort of too honest, I'd say. Um, he spares no words, but he, it's so charming at the same time. He manages to create characters that are basically unforgettable and to make you really believe every, every single thing that these people do and how they behave. I read this on my Kindle, I don't have a physical copy with me, but I very much want to pick one up because it was wonderful, it was this very quick, very heartwarming read and I very much want to read it again. Also, 
highly recommend it to anyone who hasn't picked Stephen King up because they're terrified of horror and whatever. This has no horror in it whatsoever. Um, although it does have this sort of supernatural stuff, you know, the, the, the mystical, fantastical element of this guy losing weight out of nowhere and stuff. But it's not scary at all. So this is very much recommended if you want, if you want to know what Stephen King is like without having to put yourself through the jumps and scares of his other books. Next, I read the book that I had been expecting throughout the entire year. And this one, because I took my sweet, damn sweet time with it, uh, managed to take up most of my reading time in November and December, and it was Killing Commendatory by Haruki Murakami. It's his latest book, it just came out in English, in fact, I think it came out in like October, but it took its time uh, getting to me, and it tells the story of a guy who remains unnamed throughout the novel, we don't know what his name is, but this guy who's a painter, and he gets divorced, and he's going through all this turmoil, internal turmoil, trying to figure out what he, he's going to do, because he basically painted portraits as a living, but he wants to go back to his instinct of painting more abstract pictures and stuff. And he's not living in his house anymore, he doesn't have a place to live, and that's when he's contacted by a friend of his who has a house where this friend's father, who was a very famous Japanese painter, used to live. And uh, now that his father is in an asylum, he wonders if our main character would like to sort of house it for him and take care of the house and stuff. And once our main character gets in this house, he discovers a painting by this very famous painter called Killing Commendatory. And finding out about this painting sort of sets this whole chain of events um, into action and it changes the lives of everyone around him and his life. Um, this, very much like any other Murakami novel, is really weird and really fantastical and crazy, um, but that's the joy of it, right? Murakami is the kind of writer whom I very much love. I'd say he's probably my favorite writer at the moment, but I don't know who to recommend him to because he's so weird. Um, there are many fantastical elements in this, but I found it to be a lot more accessible than Kafka on the Shore. With Kafka, I felt like a lot of it only made sense to me a while after, after thinking a lot about it and after reading theories online and stuff. And with Killing Commendatory, I think my favorite aspect of Murakami is more clear, which is, it's clearer, which is that sometimes things don't make sense and they're crazy and they change you and getting lost sometimes is the best way to find yourself and stuff and all these really crazy sort of weird elements get together to make this story about these very unforgettable characters and unforgettable events like so many creepy weird things unexplainable things happen and they don't always make sense in the end but they're still so very exciting you want to know which crazy thing is going to happen next and in this universe he creates a universe that is so unique and peculiar that everything sort of falls into place and and uh, it affects you it affects you in this sort of human level this also happens to have one of the best prologues I have ever read. It is brilliant and once I read it I was like, <laughs> okay, we are in for a ride. And yeah, this was hands down my favorite read of 2018 and that's weird because one, in 2018 I also read Kafka on the Shore, which is considered his absolute magnum opus, and two, because I have no idea who I'd recommend this to because it is just that weird and crazy. You know, I have friends who like Murakami and to them, of course, I'd say, hey, go and read it. There's this new one. But yeah, I think with Murakami, if you like experimenting and if you're not afraid of going out of a novel and wondering if you have actually understood it, then 
go ahead, but it's a crazy ride. Another novel I picked up that came out in 2018 was Children of Blood and Bone. I actually own a physical copy of it, but I have no idea where it is around here. Um, but Children of Blood and Bone is a fantasy young adult book that tells the story of a young girl whose community uh, used to rely very much on magic. They had all these magical powers and the king decides that magic is no longer allowed in the kingdom and basically kills everyone who used magic, including the mother of our main character. Um, and ever since she's tried to keep her head down and to ignore um, all the, the magical buzz around her and to just live her life and survive, but it's gotten to a point that she now is forced by a certain set of events to fight to bring back magic. Now, this is a quest story. She sort of has to do this and then that and take this to that place and at that place get this thing and go that place. You know, it's a journey and going from point A to point B in a map. So if you don't like this sort of story in which there is a quest, avoid this one. But I found it to be very much enjoyable. Um, it's a very competent fantasy story. The characters are cool, they are very interesting and engaging. The one thing that was very off-putting to me was the romance. The romance was kind of cringe-worthy. You know, um, it made the characters behave in ways that had absolutely nothing to do with them. They were completely, they were acting completely off character. And it was very frustrating. And it was very insta lovey ish as well. You know, it's uh, the romance. It, it's, this could easily have been a five star book if it weren't for the fact that I feel the author was forced to put romance in it because why a fantasy is supposed to have romance in the minds of whatever publishers, I guess. It is so bad. The romance is really, really bad. But the fantasy aspects of the story are great. The magic system is very interesting. The the other characters, you know, if we put aside the whole relationship thing, are very interesting. The, the story is told in this very uh, moving way, like you, you keep wanting to find out what's going to happen next and stuff. It's cool. It's a very cool book. I gave it four out of five stars on Goodreads, but I feel that we need to stop needing to add some romance in the stories just for the sake of there being a couple or whatever. Like, I honestly couldn't care less about this couple. And there was this other couple that was totally acceptable, but this main couple is just cringe-worthy to say the best and it's just so off-putting. I'm going to read the second book and I just, because of reasons, I, I very much imagine that this, this couple is not going to happen in book two. And I hope that they don't try to replace it because there must be romance or whatever. Because honestly, the story is so good in and of itself. The character's relationship, like the main character and her brother, the main character and her friend, these are actual relationships that we could care about and develop and that could motivate characters to act. So the fact that a romance is forced just to give reason to stupid decisions doesn't make these stupid decisions less stupid. It makes them double stupid, if anything, because you're so irritated by the fact that it has absolutely nothing to do with this person's personality. Like, ugh. it is worth it, but it is annoying at times, I guess is what I'd say. The next book I read was also a novella, just like Elevation, and it was Fox 8 by George Saunders. George, Sa George Saunders was the winner of the Booker Prize in 2017, I want to say, with Lincoln and the Bardo. And I have, I have not read Lincoln and the Bardo yet, but I read his collection of short stories, 10th of December, and it was brilliant and genius. So it really made me want to pick this one up. And it's so cute and adorable. Uh, it tells a story of a fox named Fox 8, that's his name, and he lives in this community and because he has been sort of going around humans' houses for so long and listening to parents telling their children bad time stories, he has sort of learned the human language. 
and he has started to very much empathize with us because he knows our language and hears parents talk to children and he thinks there are similarities between foxes and humans and he, he grows fond of us. Until one day he goes to a mall which he thinks is this super great creation from humans with a friend of his and stuff happens. Um, and basically Fox 8 is a letter from Fox 8 to humans asking, hey, what's going on? I think you guys are pretty cool. Why do you behave this way? Oh, I have said already that this is a great environmental story and I agree it's it's a great tale of human interference in nature and about looking at animals through a different angle. Something that's really adorable about this is that it's written it's written in the way that Fox hears us, us talk like because he hasn't read uh, actually read books he writes as he hears so for example the word human is written h o o m a n you know uh, because he hears it like that so he reproduces the sounds and it's so cute and adorable and it really gives fox 8 his very own voice but i also find that it's even more than a story about environment and nature and stuff it's a story about strangeness and how sometimes we're so cruel to anything that's strange and different from us. You know, I feel like this could also be a story about immigration and about a lot of different topics. Honestly, about any any sort of estrangement um, and how sometimes humans deal with it by excluding and by destroying and by setting barriers. It's a wonderful story. It's beautiful, it's beautifully written and even though it's so short I don't think a single word would have improved it. It's spot on perfect and I've seen that the, um, I read it on my Kindle and I've seen that the hardback edition has these super cute drawings that go with it of foxes and stuff so I'm probably gonna pick that up in the future. It's super adorable, very much recommended. I think this is for basically everyone. Go and read Fox 8 by George Saunders. The last book I have to talk to you guys about because I finished December uh, in the middle of two books, which means that those are going to go in the January, February wrap up and not in the November, December one. Um, so the last one I have to talk to you guys about is actually a short story and it's Mr. Salary by Sally Rooney. Now, Sally Rooney is the author of Normal People which got short shortlisted to the Man Booker this year, last year, 2018. And she's also the author of Conversation with Friends which was also a huge hit um, when it came out and which I have just read and loved it. Spoilers. Um, but Sally Rooney has this short story which she published in an Irish magazine, I think, and which just got republished by Faber. And when I found out about it, I sort of searched and found it in the magazine's website. And I'm going to get a copy of it, but it's going to take forever for Book Depository to send it to me. So I just read it online first. And Mr. Salary is a story of a woman who dates sort of dates, like lives with this guy who's a lot older than her and with whom she has this very complicated relationship, very platonic um, and it is a relationship, like a romantic relationship, but at the same time it is not, like it's so very complicated and confusing and difficult and you suffer for her and you feel for her and at times you hate the guy and at times you love the guy and all of that is backed up in a short story. It is wonderful and I find that Rooney's voice is so very... how can I put it? I finally feel like I found someone who writes for me, you know, even though I'm completely different from her characters and I never behave in the erratic ways that some of them do, but um, I just find her voice beautiful and brilliant and her writing is so precise and so very much shows the vulnerability and anxiousness of life in modern times. I loved Mr. Salary, I wish it was a full novel, but it's just perfect as the short novel it is. And you can pick, pick it up as this sort of 
tiny book from Book Depository. I'm going to put the link down below. Or you can just go to the website and read the story. I'm also going to link that. But it's very much recommended and I think it's a great introduction to Sally Rooney who has already put out two books that are so very highly reviewed, highly received and who probably has this very brilliant career in front of her. So if you want to check it out, it's a great introduction to her writing. So that's it guys, those were the books that I read in months of November and December. I'm so very sorry for not having posted that often in the past months. Everything has been kind of hectic and, and just crazy. Uh, but anyways, those were the books and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please click the like button down below and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more videos in the future. And for now, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye! Bye! Please subscribe!